Hi, my name is Joe and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawk Ridge Systems and today we're going to be taking a look at some tips and tricks in SOLIDWORKS inspection. What I wanted to go over today is a little known tip or trick for people who are trying to display geometric tolerance frames inside of their Excel reports that they get out of a SOLIDWORKS inspection. So there are essentially two different ways to format your Excel report depending on what you'd like to see. So let's take a look first of all in the bill of characteristics that I've been uh, creating down here. And what we see is we have some geometric tolerances already ballooned. And you can see that also on my diagram here on my PDF drawing. But we can see that there's two different ways that it's shown here in my report. First of all, there's these first couple that say C print for GTAL. And then there are these other one, this last one here at the bottom that goes ahead and shows the full GD and T frame in line and gives us the upper limit of that tolerance dimension. So a couple of different people have called in and asked about how, how does this work? Why are there two different ways of showing it? Well, let's take a look. First of all, take a look here on the left-hand side in this property manager. And what you can see is that down here in this GD and T frame sort of uh, you know manager or builder here, we've created the things that we found inside of that GD and T frame again here in the boxes. So let's go ahead and do that same thing again for one of these other ones that say C print for GTAL, this one for example right here. Now the way that this works is we go, go ahead and choose from the drop down the first box frame. So we can down uh, here, we can find the profile of the surface there. And then if after that, we go ahead and capture the frames from within here and place them here explicitly building this up as we go. So you can see here in the value field, we've got that perpendicularity, excuse me, not perpendicularity, uh, profile, the surface, uh, uh, symbol there. So now if we go ahead and capture some of these things. I want this 0 0.020 in the next frame. I capture it and place it there. And as I move through here, I can go ahead and type in now A, B, and C. And then I can build up that GD and T frame explicitly. Now when I see down here is exactly that same thing that I've built up, placed here, as well as the subtype for that GD and T frame placed inside of the report. So let's take a look and see what happens when we actually export this to an Excel report. If we come up here to the top and go to the Home tab and Publish here to the far right is our Excel export option. If I go ahead and click on it, this list of templates that comes with inspection out of the box is our first clue to how we should format our GD and T frames depending on how we'd like to see them in the report. So you can see here that there are a couple different options, but with, even within the category of AS9102, we have two of them that are marched in, marked image captures, whereas the others don't have any kind of image captures on them. So if we go ahead and choose one of these image capture ones here for a second, let's take a look and see what happens. So we take a look down here at the report that was generated. What we see in the one that says image captures is exactly what we selected inside of the OCR tool. So even though we explicitly built up this profile of a surface and perpendicularity frames, what we see here is exactly what we originally captured with the OCR tool and not that slightly cleaner version that we built up in the, in the manager on the property manager on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and close this report here now that we've seen what we get with those ones that say image captures and take a look and compare it to the ones that don't. So if we come up here and say to Excel report again and switch our selection from the image captures to the one that is not the image captures, this one right here, and export our project. We take a look in here and see that the ones that said C print for GTAL don't show anything because of course we're not seeing those image captures in this option. But here we can see this explicit GD and T frames that we built up using the manager. And so they go ahead and lose any kind of noise that we may have accidentally caught with those other ones, but we still see the same information displayed here. So that's just kind of clarifying the difference between the two uh, options in terms of how we display our GD and T frames. Um, basically, if you just go ahead and use the OCR tool, it will say C print for GTAL. And if you choose to have them in this more cleaned up version, you're going to have to come over here and build them up using the property manager. If you like this tips and trick video, be sure to check back to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.